Hey everybody, good morning. It's Avi Tenebram from TFRP. And we have a really amazing share that I'm putting together for next week. It's a big, good one. A lot of really interesting um, subtopics and sources. But just for this week, to keep the learning going, I want to share a really cute source that I think we can all relate to. If you look in the Sefer, Oyrois Hagra, which is the Torah of the Vilna Gom. And you look in the section called Bitachon, which is on page 121, paragraph 14. Okay, so if you look in Bitachon, paragraph 14, he says, There is something called the Bitachon of Ksirim, the trusting in God of idiots. If you trust in God, how could you be an idiot? So he says, because there are some people out there who they don't analyze carefully their behavior and their decisions, and they put themselves in a situation where they can make a strategic mistake, or they put themselves in dangerous situations. And then the Gura says, they trust in God, oh, God will save me. Because I have trust in God, nothing bad will happen to me. And he says, this is the trust of idiots. That's literally what, that's literally what he says. V'hu bitachin haksirim. Who's forcing you to go to a place which is so dangerous that you're able to get hurt or you're able to make a mistake? Nobody. And so we never want to be reckless. And everything that we're ever going to say about trusting in God and having faith and all that stuff, it's never going to replace being responsible and doing every single possible thing that you can on your own before God gets involved. Once you've done all of the steps necessary to be responsible, to be smart, to be balanced, to make healthy decisions, to be strategically sound, to be in a safe place and make good boundaries and and all that stuff, then there starts to be room to trust in God. Okay? Very important lesson from the Vilna Goin, Eire Sagra, Bitachon 14, page 121. I wanted to add onto what we said that when you learn Torah, Torah is a collection of ideas. And if you take any one idea all by itself and you don't understand its depth or you don't understand other ideas and how they conflict or add or subtract or qualify this idea, then you come out with this very imbalanced set of dogmatic, oversimplified ideas. And then people that don't understand Torah properly make channels like this, and then sell those ideas to the masses. And then people get in all sorts of relational trouble, financial trouble, spiritual trouble, because they're taking that one idea which hasn't been qualified or properly understood, and they are just running with it as if it has no other conditions and fine print. So today, for example, we said in this little video that there's one idea of trusting in God. And there's even an idea that if you trust in God, God may come towards you and help you. And I even wrote a paper on that. Maybe we'll publish it one day. But there's also the idea that you have to take responsibility. You have to do tshuva. You have to be smart. You have to get good advice. You have to make sure you're not biased and all that stuff, right? And they're both true. And that's the complexity. And any idea in the world has complexity to it, okay? And what we're trying to do when we learn Torah or hear classes like this is we're trying to create this like perimeter. Okay, here's faith, for example. Faith is this, but it's also this, you know, and we're trying to fill in those details with all of our knowledge. And that's why, for example, it says in the Mishnah and Avos in Perak Beis, Ein Am Ha'aretz Chassid, an ignoramus, can't become a great servant of God because as good as his intentions are, he doesn't have the complexity and the understanding of how all the different complex ideas fit together to create a complete picture. You know, you want to build a puzzle. And it's supposed to be this beautiful view of a river in Venice, right? Some some beautiful water scene in Venice with all the boats going by. But you're missing a bunch of pieces. So you're going to have what looks like sort of a puzzle with your table in between the pieces of the puzzle, right? And it's going to look ugly and incomplete. We want to create complete ideas. And, and the only way we can do that is to learn as much Torah as we can. This is one of the reasons why there is a mitzvah of Talmud, Torah, Keneged, Kula. One of the greatest mitzvahs we can do is to learn as much Torah as we can. I recently added for myself even more learning than I already have because I'm not cutting it. I'm not doing enough. And so now after I daven in the morning, 
before I take my kids to school, I'm now learning even more then because it's it's not enough. It's not enough. You gotta learn as much as we can, understand the ideas, put them together in a way that's helpful and healthy and balanced. It reminds me also also if you look in the Mesilas Yisharim of the Ramchal in the intro, he talks there about people that they think that like serving God is all about like these very dogmatic, extreme, external ideas and. He gives some funny examples there that like they think it's all about just rolling in the snow and fasting and saying very long prayers. Serving God is much more complex than that. And that's why the Messiah Sharm there says, the greatest wisdom is Yiras Hashem, is, is studying the uh, study of the fear of heaven, which is what we're learning, right? All the Shi'urim that we learn here is all just parts of trying to fear God and be the greatest servants of God that we can be. So, what we're just saying is tzedakah, for example, is important. Tzedakah tatzil mimavis, right? Let's say a person has cancer, tzedakah can save him. Um, it can rip up a decree to give tzedakah. But, but if you give 10 shekel to tzedakah when you could have given more, it may not cut it. If you give tzedakah to the wrong cause, it may not cut it. If you give it for the wrong reasons, it may or may not cut it. That's already a Gemara and Kedushan, right? right? If you know the Gemara I'm talking about, Nod your head. So, what I'm just saying is, we get in our mailboxes, we get in our inboxes, we get in our spam folders, wherever, all sorts of clickbaity stuff saying, if you just give tzedakah for the next 36 hours to this campaign, all your dreams will come true. And it may be true, because tzedakah is an incredible thing, and the Chazal talks about it, and I'm not coming to be little tzedakah, or promises that people make. Rav Nachman says, Come to Uman and I will take you out of Gehenna by your pace. Well, that's a great thing, right? I want to be pulled out of Gehenna by my pace. Here's my pace. Okay? I don't know which one I'll pull. This one or or this one. Um, but all these things are true, but it doesn't abdicate us from personal responsibility, learning as much as we can, understanding what it's talking about, doing the best that we can do, creating those parameters, that picture, understanding, okay, what is this thing, tzedakah? What does it mean? When do you do it? How much? To who? Right? How does it work? I can just do all the bad things in the world and go to Uman and I'll get pulled out. I can just do all the sins in the world and give a little bit of tzedakah, 10 shekel or 1 shekel, and then my problems will go away. Not so simple. So let's keep painting that picture, learning as much Torah as we can, and understanding the complexity of all the ideas that we learn, and then we're going to be able to know how to use them properly, and that's certainly going to help us keep going on the road to a very healthy, happy, productive life and getting close to Hashem.